Assalamu alaikum to Dr. Yazid al Sheikh, who, who of course is an assistant professor of medical genetics and chairman of the, of the Clinical Lab Sciences College of Applied Medical Sciences at King Saud University, as well as the chairman of the Saudi Society Clinical Laboratory Sciences. MashaAllah, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, salam. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we're talking about laboratory medicine. Now, before we get into the different subjects, the different branches that it has, can you just give us an idea, sir, what is the importance of these laboratories in hospitals or in research centers, for example? Well, uh, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, mm -hmm. uh, their importance is, uh, is great. Mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, being the chairman of Clinical Lab Science, uh, chairman of the Saudi Society, mm -hmm. I've uh, gathered uh, quite interesting uh, statistics okay, good. Uh, showing that around 85% mm -hmm. of the patient uh, or decision making regarding the patient mm -hmm. originates in the lab okay. and uh, that gives you uh, a good idea about how important the lab is. Okay, the, only int the other interesting thing is that this mm -hmm. percentage is actually getting higher mm -hmm. so uh, the, the physicians, hospitals rely even more so on advanced uh, laboratory uh, diagnostics. That's great, that's Absolutely. Um, and Dr. Yazid, earlier off air, we were talking a little bit about how um, important it is for the lab to be actually um, well disciplined, to be uh, professionally managed, because results or major results can be uh, taken from these labs that can actually cause the patient to, to take treatment or even to actually be diagnosed for a medical condition. It can affect the, their lives dramatically. Sure. So sometimes when we, and we've all maybe been in the experience one way or the other, sometimes when we actually go to a lab and we get whatever it might be, yes. blood, what, any other bodily fluids, whatever it might be, uh, sampled, when it's inaccurate or when it's inaccurate, what is the cause of this? Is it um, poor practice? Is it um, the way the staff are handling the substance? Is it uh, equipment in the lab? I mean. Let's talk a little bit about the discipline when it comes to results. Sure thing. Um, actually, you, you mentioned a very important aspect of laboratory medicine practice or mm -hmm. clinical lab practice, which is uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, fortunately, major hospitals in Saudi Arabia and major hospitals in Riyadh are accredited. Um, there are accrediting bodies that uh, exist that come in and certify that the results or that the procedures in the laboratory are mm -hmm. done to absolute perfection. Mm -hmm. uh, once, once these results um, are uh, attained, mm -hmm. the management of the lab is mm -hmm. certified, then it could be accredited um, using one of these accrediting bodies. Okay. Uh, I would, of course, um, advise all laboratory, private and public, mm -hmm. to seek accreditation. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it is not the easiest thing to do, mm -hmm. to, see, to seek, uh, uh, for example, CAP accreditation, which is an example that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, CAP uh, is short for the College of American mm -hmm. Pathologists, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an institute that comes and accredits labs. Um, and once you've, you've, you've uh, been accredited, then you can at least, to a certain extent, be sure that the results that you, are, you attain are closer to the, closer to the true results. Mm -hmm. There is always a margin of error. Mm -hmm. However, so what they're trying to do is just shorten or uh, shrink this margin of error. Mm -hmm. And the closer you are to, to the, the true results, then uh, the quality increases. So, uh, but you talked about the factors involved. Mm -hmm. There are technical factors, human factors that contribute to the errors that happen. Mm -hmm. What we try to do, mainly in the Saudi society, is try to uh, evoke uh, uh, awareness about these practices, mm -hmm. uh, promote continuous training within hospitals, uh, and uh, we, 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 we try to get in contact, mm -hmm. and we are in contact with the Saudi society, the Saudi Commission for Health Specialities, mm -hmm. to ensure that the tests that are done on these people that are certified to work on these labs mm -hmm. are done to the highest quality. That's very interesting. And sir, um, a very important question. Um, who works at these laboratories and hospitals and what, uh, what qualifications should they have in order to be working in such places? 
That's a good question. There, there is a wide range of, of disciplines. Okay. Going from, for example, a pathologist who is mm -hmm. a medical physician mm -hmm. that has been trained, that have been trained in the laboratory mm -hmm. disciplines. Okay. Then you have the laboratory specialists, okay. uh -huh. uh, which uh, whom attain a degree in clinical lab sciences or medical technology okay, from good. university on a bachelor's level. Then good. they go up for up upwards from that. And you also have uh, medical technicians. Okay. So it is a wide array of, of people. Then you have clinical scientists okay, wow. that okay. uh, contribute to... So uh, again in the society this is one of the th few things that we are unique. Mm. Usually when you have a uh, professional or scientific society it is really focused on a, a group of professionals in mm -hmm. one area. Mm -hmm. Whereas we are uh, an amalgama yeah. amalgamation of, of many disciplines Absolutely. and trying to uh, work uh, coherently that's good that's good so there's a wide range mm -hmm. again we have the porters we have the support uh, people mm -hmm. the only thing is that we are the furthest away from the, f the patient mm -hmm. because we hardly see any patient we only see fragments of the patient either okay. tissue or, or blood <laughs> unless you're taking a sample <laughs> pet, uh, well usually there are uh, specialized people Absolutely. that take the sample Absolutely. but Absolutely. this is another issue you you tend to get into um, distance mm -hmm. about what you're really doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is very important for people who work in the lab to make sure that they are aware that this is a, a human sample, that his or her health relies on your, your professional work. So uh, to okay. deal with the substance or the bodily fluid, whatever it might be. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's almost like dealing with the person. If you put that in concept, then maybe this can be exactly. an issue. And I mean, uh, the, the importance of the lab, going back to the importance of the lab, is immense. Um, there are technologies, for example, for screening of, let's say, breast cancer. Mm, 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 mm. But no matter how advanced the, the mammogram, it will just show you a lump. Exactly. It will show you a colorful lump, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes, <laughs> a, a few aspects of the blood supply mm -hmm. to that lump. And that's it. But it will not tell you the actual Absolutely. Mm. Type of cancer, the stage of cancer, mm. and the genotyping of this cancer. Okay. It all relies on the lab. This is, this is a great point that you've mentioned. This is um, maybe highlighting the significance of these medical labs in our medical life. But um, Dr. Yazid, um, I'm interested to know more about hygiene standards because you mentioned earlier um, this is bodily substance, it's a sample, whatever it might be. There's, of course, uh, special. Um, requirements for the people who work in these labs or special training I believe that they need to undergo yes. so they know how to deal with these samples hygienically once um, even from taking the sample even disposing the sample later on I mean tell us a little bit more about hygiene practices in the lab well it starts with education and in the institutes that graduate these people um, I know for for example that our institute we have a laboratory safety and lab management uh, course mm -hmm. that is conducted um, there should be internal laboratory safety procedures and training within hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the hazards are many. Mm -hmm. You never know what is in the blood sample that you have. Absolutely. It could be Ebola, mm -hmm. it could be HIV, mm -hmm. you never know. Mm -hmm. um, and to treat it professionally I think is, is very important. Absolutely. Um, not only that, that for example people who are not aware that this could harm their, 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 their loved ones mm -hmm. at home. Absolutely. You could contract something, take it back to home, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. spread the... Uh, it could be infectious. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I had a, a clash with one of... Uh, I, went, I had a flu, mm -hmm. and I went to get um, uh, a test whether it was uh, H1N1 or something. Mm -hmm. And this person was coming in and out of the lab, with, uh, and out of the test room, mm -hmm. without a mask. Oh. And I asked him, well, you should, you should put a mask on. And he said, well, no, I'm immune. I've been working here for four days and I didn't get anything. <laughs> but I said, well, you might be immune, but you're a carrier. Exactly. You could carry this on to somebody else. True. So um, the awareness should go outside the scope of oneself true. and think about uh, people around him. Absolutely. That's very true. This is very interesting. Uh, and so, um, as we mentioned earlier, that you are chairman of the Saudi Society of Clinical uh, Laboratory Sciences. Can you give us an idea? So, what, what important role does this play? Well, it, it, uh, of course, as any scientific society, it mm -hmm. uh, plays a role in, uh, or is starting to play a role because it is a relatively new society. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, awareness, education, uh, 
um, getting people in this profession together, negotiating. But it also, most of its work has been in shedding light on this profession. Okay, good. Because um, we usually uh, get good quality students in, mm -hmm. but these are students that know about this profession by chance, for example. Okay. No, it is not a, a profession yet that people aspire to. Mm -hmm. Whereas it is very interesting, especially when you have the uh, many interesting uh, specialties under it, molecular mm -hmm. biology, genomic medicine. True. Uh, so the Saudi society has or is playing a role in addition to scientific activities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, into shed or onto shedding light uh, mm -hmm. on this profession and trying to get um, people within, within the, uh, the realm of the uh, Ministry of Health to recognize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this profession and the importance of this. But they are, they are, Absolutely. they are Excellent. gradually getting aware about it. Uh, Dr. Yassid, speaking of the relevance and the importance, we know that, um, we know on the program, and of course many viewers watching us do does know that um, the medical lab is of importance and the role is actually evolving more in the world of healthcare. It's becoming more and more important. Off air we spoke a little bit about molecule medicine. Uh, if you can tell us maybe more and tell the viewers initially what is molecule medicine mm. and how important it is in uh, the health sector at the moment. Well, molecular medicine or genomic medicine uh, means that you treat, diagnose um, and manage uh, a disease based on the molecular level and we mean by that DNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you look at and diagnose diseases based upon their geno the one's genome. Mm -hmm. uh, you detect what are the causative factors that usually start with a genetic mutation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the future is to try to intervene genetically. Absolutely. Uh, yet this is quite tricky because mm -hmm. once you mingle with the gene, you don't know what you're affecting. And I, 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 I was eardropping a while ago, and you, you, you spoke something about gene splicing, I think. Or, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a phenomenon that could be affected by manipulation of the genome. For example, there is a group of, uh, uh, that there's a group who studied uh, a cancer, uh, where they treated the cancer genetically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a group of children. Mm -hmm. um, but however, these children, after a certain age, mm -hmm. all of them developed another cancer as a result of this mm -hmm. intervention. Mm -hmm. oh, however, wow. molecular medicine is evolving in a very nice way at the moment mm -hmm. through or what is known as personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. Personalized medicine is treatment mm -hmm. of a person individually based upon their genome. Okay. We all know that, for example, and this is very important in complex genomic disorders mm -hmm. such as cancer, diabetes, and obesity, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. where you have a, a number of genes at play. Okay, and for example, in cancer, mm -hmm. you would find that person A and person B have the same type of cancer, mm -hmm. but they respond differently, differently to yes. a certain uh, regime, of a therape therapeutic regime. Mm -hmm. And that has primarily to do with their genetic makeup. Exactly. So if we can tailor make these therapeutics or these therapies towards this person, towards an individual, mm -hmm. based upon their genome, mm -hmm. conventional medicine, and bioinformatics, which is a marriage between uh, information technology mm -hmm. and uh, computer sciences and biology. You realize, Dr. Azeed, that you've lost me there. <laughs> but, uh, I hope I didn't lose, <laughs> lose the... You've lost me. No, but yeah. it's very interesting. It's very interesting, but... Um, it's basically, to put it mm -hmm. in a very... Uh, simple I terms. Treat, I, I, a treat, simple a I treat a person term. based mm -hmm. upon their genetic makeup. So I can... Um, I can... Uh, adjust the treatment to suit this individual particular yes but because based on their genome based on their and genes. eventually eventually i will treat every single disorder on the genetic level that's the vision wow however um, we know now that there are technologies that mm -hmm. we can you can decipher your genome your individual genome in a week mm -hmm. and relatively cheap compared to 10 years ago it took about and this is available where, Dr. Yassid? Anywhere or in uh, private hospitals and government mm -hmm. hospitals? Um, it, it, is, it is available at the moment as a technology mm -hmm. um, in Saudi Arabia. In King Faisal, at King Saud, we are acquiring this technology. And I know that King Abdelaziz 
uh, City for Science and Technology, they have this technology, but it is not yet geared mm -hmm. towards personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's partially personalized. For example, in, in treatment of cancer, they can study which are the, which are the uh, best way to treat a cancer based upon this person's genetic Gene makeup. makeup. I exactly. think everyone, as you said, responds differently. Absolutely. Uh, if, so you have to study to basically their gene makeup. So before we go very briefly, uh, based from your professional experience, what could you tell, let's say, uh, students who are interested in this field of medicine, what should they look forward and what are some things that, that they have to understand before applying for this uh, field? Well, I think it is a very, very interesting field to, uh, to uh, take up mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, specialize in. Uh, we find that mostly uh, the brightest uh, females go towards our department, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the, the males are a bit hesitant. hesitant. <laughs> uh, they don't want to go into a a lab environment to be confined, whereas True. it is not so. Every mm -hmm. every job has a exactly. certain confinement it to it, True. but so. it is it is an, uh, a very very interesting area of medicine. Mm -hmm. It is the most evolving area of medicine yet. Absolutely. So it, it is, uh, it is the advancements technologically and scientifically mm -hmm. are great. It's growing. So that enough is, I think, uh, <laughs> um, We'd like incentive. to thank you, of course, uh, Dr. Yazid El Sheikh, who's Assistant Professor of Medical Genetics, Chairman of Clinical Lab Sciences, uh, College of Applied Medicine um, Science at the King Saud University, and also the Chairman of the Saudi Society for Clinical Laboratory Science. Thank you so much for joining us, thank Dr. You. Yazid, and giving us uh, or highlighting the significance and importance of uh, uh, laboratory medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, though, Good Morning KSA still has lots more to come. We're going to go off to our art report. Today we're, today we're looking at an art exhibition by the name of Suleiman Babija, something that was happening in Jeddah. Stay tuned because still to come we have our cooking segment with Chef Randa Redwan. Don't go away. <laughs>